This video demonstrates the setup for minimally invasive mitral valve surgery in a step-by-step -step approach. Femoral cannulation is done through an oblique incision in the right groin. Both femoral vein and femoral artery are exposed. Per string suture with 5 proline is taken in both vessels. Seldinger technique is used where a wire is passed under echocardiographic guidance in a bicaval view to visualize the wire all the way up to the SVC. Once that's confirmed, the venous cannula is inserted and again visualized into the SVC. Venous line is connected. The venous line is fixed with a nylon stitch and snared with a tourniquet to allow adjustment during the case if needed. Similar technique is used for arterial cannulation. A hybrid cannula is inserted over a wire and the wire is also has to be visualized in the descending thoracic aorta. Arterial line is fixed. Once femoral cannulation is done, uh, a four to five centimeter incision is done just anterior to the mid axillary line. And then the soft tissue and fat are dissected all the way down to the intercostal space. The mini thoracotomy is done in the fourth intercostal space. Soft tissue retractor is placed and low profile intercostal retractor is placed over the soft tissue retractor. Then a five millimeter 30 degree scope is placed. The first step uh, done after the thoracotomy is a placement of uh, a retraction stitch in the tendinous part of the diaphragm for retraction caudally during the operation. This stitch is passed to the outside using Cardio Thompson device and fixed to the skin using a hemostat. A multi-level intercostal nerve block is performed under direct visualization at the beginning of the case using a long-acting local anesthetics. Prior to any dissection in the pericardium, the phrenic nerve is marked on entire course to be kept under direct visualization throughout the case. The thymic fat is dissected all the way up until we visualize the inferior border of the innominate vein. Pericardiotomy is then performed and extended all the way down to the IVC and then all the way up till we visualize the pericardial reflections. Posterior pericardial sutures are placed, they are bust to the outside using Cardio Thompson device and fixed with hemostat outside the incision. Again, anterior pericardial sutures are placed and those are sutures to the anterior part of the incision in the soft tissue retractors.
in order to place the clamp as high as possible a dissection plane is started between the right pulmonary artery and the aorta directed toward the left shoulder this is also done anteriorly when this is done a trial of clamping is attempt to make sure we are high enough and across the aorta then a spot for the cardioplegia needed is chosen Registered for or stitch is taken in preparation for the cardioplegia needed insertion. Once this is done, the sonder guard groove is prepared for the mitral valve surgery. Cross clamp is inserted through the same incision. The flow is dropped and the aorta is retracted upward using the suction and the cross clamp is placed. Once we have good arrest, the clamp is retracted to be away from the incision. After that, we placed a two right atrial retraction sutures. Those sutures are brought out through the incision and fixed with the hemostat. Left atriotomy is performed. and then a left atrial lift system is inserted as illustrated here segmental analysis of the valve is performed and the legit is identified Artificial cordes are placed with the help of 31 valve sizer to expose the subvalvular apparatus. The artificial cordes are placed in the prolapsed leaflets. After performing water test, those cordias are slided down as needed and then they tie it down using a knot pusher. After that, a flexible mitral valve ring is placed and sutures using 3O proline. Once this is done, the mitral valve is tested with a suction irrigator as a final test. The left atriotomy is closed using a four or proline sutures. from both sides and they are tied in the middle. To have an adequate exposure 
it's extremely important to place the temporary epicardial pacemaker wire before unclamping while the heart is still arrested. The cross clamp is removed after the airing. Patient is weaned from the cardiopulmonary bypass and echo showed very good repair results. Decannulation is performed. Cardioplegia needle is removed under direct vision and secured with a core node device. The intercostal spaces are approximated using number two vicarious sutures. And then the rest of the incision is closed in a regular fashion. The chest tube is inserted at the same side of the camera port.